My people, it don't say so. Wahala don't happen. A lot of people don't they talk say, Sanusi, what do you they do for her so rock? This video don't draw a lot of people attention. Say Sanusi, where it be Emia from Kano? What do you they do for her so rock? My people, not be smart, you know. Sanusi don't finally go to her go confront Inubu. And I know, say, Sanu Sanusi don't feel they talk about first subsidy. Say me they can't remove first subsidy before Tinubu even become president at all at all, my people. My people as I they talk to Naso. I go put the old video of Sanusi where we say if they talk about before Tinubu become president. And the new one where we say Sanusi they go meet Tinubu for Asorok. This one not be say na right up oh. this one I confirm from Asorok where we say Sanusi. Carrying two legs to go meet Bala Ahmed Tinubu, my people. Make one go watch video where we say he draw a lot of people attention. Where people they say ah, it don't happen. Say table leg don't break, my people. Make one go watch video. Excellency, Mr. President. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, a number of reasons. First of all, um, the president and I are old friends. He's my brother. Uh, we've been friends since his first term as governor of Lagos State when I was a banker. And I have not seen him since the elections. I wanted to give him time to settle down. Um, so the first reason was to come and congratulate him formally. But also, I wear many caps. Uh, I wear the cap of an economist. So I came to thank him for the steps he has taken to put this economy on course. As you know, many of the issues that we have been talking about, uh, the subsidy that has caused a hemorrhage on the fiscus, the multiple exchange rate regimes, and so on, uh, these are issues that I have personally been talking about for a long time. And I'm happy that on his very first day, he has addressed these issues and the markets are happy. And it is important uh, when the government does the right thing for us to give them feedback. It's not always uh, when they do a wrong thing that you complain. So he has started on such a strong footing as far as the economy is concerned that we have to come and support and encourage uh, that we continue along that path and be advocates for the policies he has pursued. Uh, the second cap I wear is that of the Horejo Tabita Pulaku, and I'm therefore concerned about the issue of uh, herdsmen farmer clashes, and he's also concerned. And we discussed um, steps that will need to be taken to begin to look at some of those issues. But in particular, um, I came to appeal to him on the case of the 37 herdsmen who were bombed by the Air Force in Nasarawa State uh, a few months ago, uh, which uh, we wrote a letter to President Buhari on. Uh, and we have now written a reminder because it's a matter we do not want to be swept under the carpet. And um, the President has asked me again to send him that letter, and I'm sure that he will look into, into the matter. Uh, the, the third major issue we discussed was the issue of poverty, especially in northern Nigeria, the questions of out-of-school children, girl-child education, uh, and, how, uh, um, and, and his thoughts on that matter. And this is a big priority for him. Um, and we would be, uh, again, uh, continuing with the conversation to see how we can help with ideas for how to address these issues because uh, without education in the north and without educating the girl child, you are not going to have um, uh, uh, an amelioration of the extreme poverty and insecurity in the north. So it's really about the economy, about the people, uh, about his policies to encourage him and to also uh, make it clear that uh, at any point in time, uh, we are here uh, to advise uh, and, and he knows that and I'm just one phone call away. And I'm very, very happy uh, to have seen him, to see the mindset, and I wish him all the best. In 1980, 
Nigeria's GDP per capita on a purchasing power parity basis was $2,180. In 2014, it had risen by 50% to $3,099. According to the World Bank, where were we in 2019? $2,229. At this rate, in the next two years, in terms of purchasing power parity, the average income of the Nigerian would have gone back to what it was in 1980 under Shehu Shagari. How many years? 40? No progress. Zero progress. 40 years wasted. Between 2014 and 2019, on the basis of this index of the purchasing power of the average income of the average Nigerian, we had wiped out all the progress made in 35 years. We have a responsibility as a people to rise and improve the life of the people of this country. It's no longer about the government, it's no longer about political parties, it's no longer about traditional rulers, it's no longer about emirs. The days are gone when you'll see one class of people, whether they're emirs or civil servants, cannot talk, or they cannot do this, or they cannot do that, those days are gone. When there's a fire in your house, everybody goes and gets a bucket of water. So we need to understand economics as a people. I think we have little understanding of how economics works. We need to understand the implications of the choices that we are making. Because, you know, 70% of the problems we have in this country, from insecurity to herdsmen and firmer clashes, all of them have their roots in economics. It's about resources. Even this shout for restructuring for this, it's about resources. We need to grow this economy and make it work for the poor people. And since I wear two caps, and yes, I had the, this is a summary of my economic interventions. At the level of the North and at the level of Muslims, we need to look hard at ourselves and question the choices that we have made. And if we cannot make those changes, and you know, Ibrahim Ado spoke about a law, and Bashir Ali spoke about it. We got scholars in Kano to sit for three years to draft a Muslim code of personal status that begins to address some of these concerns. That law was ready in 2019. It has not been passed. I also sent it to the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, the governor of Plateau, and said, look, in case any state government wants it, give it to the governors. I have not heard anything back. We keep talking about poverty in the North. We keep talking about al -Majure. This al I keep saying, did not produce themselves. I keep coming back to these issues. I know people don't like hearing them and they keep saying, You're, well, you've said enough. No, we will continue to say it and say it until people get to understand. <laughs> that if you cannot maintain one wife and you marry three, if you cannot maintain three children and you have 17, if you leave those children on the street, if you don't educate them, if you don't give them training, 
you are going to have them grow up into young men that will be a problem to our society. The youth that you see on drugs, those that go into stealing and kidnapping, they are all products of that social system. We have to ask ourselves, is this what Islam said we should have? Are these the children that Islam said we should have? The fears that we have are grossly unfounded. If you're told that you can go out and as Kingsley said, when we started the banking reforms, I remember, on the eve of the banking reforms, every day, full page, front page of newspapers, the CEOs were at the villa. They were friends of the presidents. President after president, they were oligarchs. They were untouchable. I remember when we started going after the bankers, Someone called me and said, you know, you're a young man. You don't know what you're doing. You will not succeed. What have we done today? So far, three, I think, or four of the wealthiest and most powerful bank CEOs in this country have gone to jail. And nothing happened. You know, you can fight any system. You don't need a large number. And people can have temporary power that they can use, but the truth will always prevail. When I was suspended from the central bank, I gave an interview. And I made a famous statement. I said, you can suspend a man, but you cannot suspend the truth. And this is the truth that has come out. In this country, as His Eminence the Sultan said recently, this country has a problem. We can't ignore the fact that things are not working. When you are in a society that is so abnormal, you cannot afford to be a conformist. Because if we all conform, the country will not change. Many years ago, when I was screaming about the trillions being spent on fuel subsidy. My people now the video now on a new watch for me so on a see what Apple for inside the video. Alright my people I would like to end the video for you. Make gonna let me know waiting on a thing for the comment section and if I never subscribe make gonna subscribe so that on I not go miss any latest gist way at the upload. Now bye bye to like comment away next time. Bye guys because in the next video. Bye guys